Poor Lamont, he's just doing his damnedest to pretend none of this shit is weird and all of the food is good. (laughs) And I've been there. I've been there, Lamont. (laughs) And by the way, if if they were doing, like, really good latkes or something, I would be like, oh, yeah, he's having a great time. But they were like, try the the filter fish with the horse 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 radish. radish. (laughs) You ever seen a ground up fish kept in a jar of liquid like a body part? (laughs) Here it is. It's nice and room temp. (laughs) God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema, except when we decide to go old school. I'm your host, No Illusions. Heath's going to be unable to join us this week, but sitting 900 miles to my northeast is my bad friend, Eli Bosnick. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? Hanukkah tacular! It is a tacular. It's a tacular in the middle of <laughs> October, though. This is a get ahead. I can say that because Heath's not here. Right. Heath's not here. We don't have to worry about him reading the calendar for an entire episode. <laughs> And sitting 10 feet to Eli's up is our special guest masochist. She's a magician, a glutton for punishment, and on a related note, a returning guest, Rachel Wax. Rachel, welcome back to the show. Thank you so much for having me. I'm full of rage at you guys for making me watch this movie. Though. So <laughs> if that comes across as angry during the show, I, I don't apologize. It's how I feel. OK, no, no, no need to. Every one of our guests is angry at us by the time yeah. we reach this point. So it's true. So tell us, Rachel, what are you angry with us about? What are we going to be breaking down today? We watched Full Court Miracle, the story of some shitty white Jewish kids using a black homeless guy to fulfill their dreams of becoming mediocre basketball players. <laughs> wow. You, it's it's rare that you could just do the straight read on that and it be so fitting with our... Yeah, uh, yeah you nailed it. With yep. our format. All right. So, Eli, how bad was this movie? Well... If you love basketball and mismatched stories of friendship, Jews and African Americans are probably your worst bet to make this movie about. (laughs) Short of like a Chinese guy and a Japanese guy during the massacre at Nanking, there are no two worst sets of people you could combine for your feel-good Disney Channel movie. It's true. Yeah, so yeah, this is a Disney Channel film. It's also based on the true story of Lamont Carr, or I mean... The part with Lamont Carr is based. I mean, the miracle shit is not based on a true. I was going to say. But, I was yeah. like, really? Yeah, but very loosely. The, the, but the guy in it is a real guy who really taught at a yeshiva or who coached at a yeshiva at some point. But that's pretty much the, the what makes it exceptional. Is can you believe that they overcame racism long enough to let this guy coach at their yeshiva? That's the exceptional. <laughs> aspect of the story it's the overarching theme and i mean gosh I, can we even count the number of players that he sent on to the nba i mean there's <laughs> no no it would be physically oh. impossible to count <laughs> zeros of them <laughs> zeros of players all right so is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at I want to nominate this for best worst kids trying to talk black when they encounter an African American man. It was so cringy. (laughs) It's like when an old guy meets a black person and changes their tone of voice. Yeah. And like goes in for like a weird like hug handshake thing. (laughs) Yes. But doesn't do that with anybody else. It was that the movie we literally get that moment the awkward like oh you guys do handshakes differently don't you (laughs) it was so painful yeah i like that we get all three levels of jewish racism towards black people in this movie (laughs) there's the talk slow because maybe they don't speak english of the (laughs) oldest generation (laughs) yep there's Mm -hmm. the we're doing a handshake together of the medium generation and the you're a servant right will you work for me of the youngest generation (laughs) which is funny because it was the embodiment of Eli's reaction to black people, my mother's reaction to black people, and my father's reaction to black people. Yeah, exactly. We got them all. We got them all together. Okay. So, but I want to keep my job, so we're not going to say which one is. Yeah, right, right, right. Exactly. I was moving on quickly. Yeah. (laughs) No, so we're going to go with, I was going to go with uh, best worst helicopter parent. Okay. Because mom, she seems to want to be a helicopter parent, but like, from a distance, like as long as it doesn't, she's, she's a helicopter parent, like in intent, but then doesn't even come to her son's championship basketball game. 
it's as though she wants to be a helicopter parent, but then she realizes what a piece of shit her son is every time they have a scene together. Yeah. And she's like, ah, fuck it, I'm leaving again. <laughs> okay, that explains a lot. Yeah, no, that, that that's a good theory. And I'm going to go with best worst deciding what's a miracle in your movie. Look, my people, Jews, <laughs> you have nothing on Chris. I've seen Christians be like, my used car dealership went slightly better than expected. God <laughs> himself has reached his hand down and great our thing. <laughs> These Jews are like, maybe he's a guy. I don't want to bother you, but maybe if the emergency backup generator could last a couple more minutes, it's a miracle for us. It's all I ask. <laughs> I just love the way they slow played. Like this miracle takes like five opportunities to stop mid miracle, look directly at the camera and say, "Huh? Ah, you get it? <laughs> this is a miracle now." It also, I mean, we'll get to it. It bails on its first miracle. The first miracle okay, they like I was going to say, like there's not really one big miracle, right? <laughs> like the first miracle they're like, "Oh, that black guy's a ghost." And then the movie's like Oh, we can't pretend that black guy's a ghost. This is based on a true story. So they just choose a different miracle later on in the plot. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll tell you what. We've got to spend a lot of time talking about a sport none of us really know shit about. So we're we're going to go over our flashcards one more time. But we're back in a flash with all the, all the some of Judaism's best friends are black messaging. That is full court miracle. Can't believe I let you drag me to the wine store. I'm just getting a couple gifts. We'll be in and out. It'll be fun. Gentlemen, welcome to the grapist. Snifter of your own farts? Ooh, yes, please. Gross. No. Also, I'm sorry. Did you say... What can your... I help you with today? Perhaps something from the sand? Or are we feeling adventurous? Ooh, I am kind of feeling adventurous. Mm, then perhaps this would interest you. It's redolent of appleberry grape hamster. Yes! Nice. But hamster. for the mild palate, we have received text message and new balloon. New balloon! I was going to say, I was wondering if you oh were going to have my that. God. Is there anywhere that's less pompous and more accessible where I could get wine? That's good. Well, have you tried the prisoner wines? What are the prisoner wines? Uh, it's not fair. I had a mouthful of the new balloon. I just finished drinking it. The prisoner wine company insists on doing things differently. Like 20 years ago, when they decided to combine some of California's best and most unusual grape varieties to make a bold and complex blend, a.k.a. their namesake wine, the Prisoner Red Blend. So wait, I could get a wine that's smooth, rich, and approachable without talking to you? Indeed you can. The Prisoner Wine Company will ship all of their rule-bending blends, like the Prisoner Red Blend, the Prisoner Chardonnay, and Thorn Merlot, directly to your door. Yeah, they actually sent us three bottles to try. They were delicious. Mm, as delicious as this one? I'm told it has a strong note of pearl necklace dropped in birthday cake. That is fantastic, but better. Better than that. All right, fancy wine man, where do I get some? Hey, like, whatever gets me out of here, right? Just go to theprisonerwine.com slash awful for 20% off, plus shipping included on your first purchase. Get it in time for the holidays. This is the best deal they have available. Get 20% off, plus shipping included at theprisonerwine.com slash awful. That's theprisonerwine.com slash awful. Offer valid on first-time online orders only for U.S. residents of legal drinking aid through 1231-21. Other exclusions may apply. Please enjoy wines responsibly. Great. Come on, Heath. Ah, so you gentlemen won't be staying for our very old Nintendo's display. Well, well now, what, why didn't you say you had old Nintendo's? Mm, very good, sir. How old are the Nintendo's? Oh, very old. Nice. There they are, the Disney Channel's two star writers. How are you two? Good, I guess. Yeah, very excited to be here. And I can't tell you how excited we are at Disney to be making a movie about such an important spiritual day for your people. Um, Actually, Hanukkah's not that important. Yeah, it, it's just sort of been made more visible so Jewish kids can get presents around Christmas time. Right. Okay. All right. Well, so we're going to make a Hanukkah movie anyway, and we want to capture a typical Jewish story. Oh, like. Like an immigrant story? Or do you mean like within the community? Mm -hmm. So we were thinking more like, you know, your mom wants you to become a doctor, but you're not sure if you want to become a doctor. What, would we say that's a typical Jewish story? Yeah, that doesn't seem like super Jewish to me. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, no, sure. It, like mom's a doctor, dad's a you know real estate agent, probably is struggling with your work in Hebrew school. Okay, sorry, I I, I don't want to be rude. It just seems like like maybe you don't know anything about Jews except for very very broad stereotypes, and I'm not sure we're going to be able to write the movie that you're looking for. Oh. Oh yeah, okay. Well, I guess I guess not. I mean, after all, we we were thinking the main character would be friend uh, a black guy, so I can see how that would be difficult. What if what if he's a basketball player and an absent father? Now you're cooking with latchkeys. Do you mean latkes? Uh, sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back for the breakdown, and we're going to start off by establishing our location with a sweeping shot of Philadelphia's famous cockout statue of William Penn. Yeah. So great. Poor Philadelphia. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. Also, I want to be clear. Are people under the impression that there was a shtetl in the lower part of Philadelphia in the 90s? I was also <laughs> confused about that. Oh, what? Was the city putting on a production of Fiddler on the Roof from 1992 to 1994 that they just let stay in the streets? I have no idea what's going on. A shtetl? It means like a Jewish village. Oh, okay. All right. All yeah, because right. they have like they have like Orthodox Jews pushing carts full of turnips. Also, there are VW bugs driving by. <laughs> it's a weird timeline. <laughs> yeah, I was confused about what year this movie was. Re like, I actually had to stop and check online to see what year it was made because <laughs> it just seemed so bizarre. Wait, it was like 2000, right? 2003, somewhere around yeah, there? 2003, yeah, 2003. Okay. All right. So, yeah, so we're going to pan over to this shtetl and, and we're going to meet Alex who is walking to school with oh I wrote school and it's going to turn out to be Yeshiva with uh, with Julie yeah it, was that her name she played such a small part in the movie I couldn't even remember I had to go back and, and insert that at some point he says listen Julie and I'm like okay finally I can change sure. it from girl lead yeah I wrote girl lead in all of my notes <laughs> <laughs> this, this movie forgets Julie like a grandma with Alzheimer's it's a real bummer <laughs> yeah <laughs> I'm not sure what part she played. Like, I don't even know. She like popped her head in every few scenes, said two lines, died for the rest of it. It really felt like the Disney Channel had a six movie contract with this girl. They were trying to run out. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Right. Or she was supposed to be a romantic lead. And then like her and the boy filmed the scene where they kissed and all the Jews in the room were like, a six a so they oh, cut it from okay. the final cut. Oh, absolutely. She's also just like a mean friend. Like she was a very Eli-esque friend. The movie <laughs> opens and she's just <laughs> roasting him. Yep. And that's all she does in the movie is yep. roast him. Right. She Like she comes to all his basketball games just to give him a shit about how bad his team sucks. Yeah. Yeah. And like to be fair, they do. But yeah, she's so unsupportive. But but this movie wants us to know that she's like a cool tomboy girl so in every scene, she's wearing a skirt over pants. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. They kept establishing that she can play basketball. And I was like, oh, OK, at the end of the movie, she's going to play basketball and help the team win. No, no. Well, so I think maybe that was another one of those things that got cut when the uh, when the Jewish test audience saw it. Right. Yeah, sure. So during this walk to school, we have to establish Alex's singular personality trait, which is that he sure loves him some basketball. Okay, let's talk about the elephant in the room up front. This movie is about a little three foot two Jewish boy <laughs> who wants to be in the NBA and the movie will never make any attempt to make that anything but a foolish hallucination. Well, so even to the point where he's like a full head shorter than all the other kids on the team, they never even acknowledge that. Yeah. How old are they supposed to be? I, I went back and forth the whole movie because he's three feet tall. Everyone else is eight feet tall. Some of them look 17. Some of them look eight. Are they in high school? Are they in grade school? They're supposed to be 15. 15? Uh, that's not helpful to me. Is that yeah. is that high school? <laughs> yeah, that's high school. That's high yeah. School. Starting high school. Yeah, exactly. But again, they go to yeshiva, so. Well, yeah, yeah so they're starting <laughs> whatever that is. <laughs> Yeah, so, but we established that he loves basketball. His team is terrible. They're going to get destroyed by the Warriors, which is the really good bad guy team. And then Julie leaves because she's going to go to a real school while he goes to Yeshiva. Yeah, she's like, I got to go learn math and stuff. He's like, whatever. Yeah. But we also, this is where we meet the mean principal, Mrs. Klein. 
Yeah. This like is this supposed to establish her as the villain because she's mad at him for bouncing a basketball in the hallway? You're not allowed to bounce a fucking basketball in the hallway. People gotta walk through that shit. Of course, but we're supposed to be like, ooh, she's the main villain in this film. I, I yeah, I sure hope somebody puts some kind of colored dye in her shampoo later. So yeah. Yeah. She's got Disney original movie villain written all over her where they can't be like murderers, but they're just like eh, things that kids don't like. Yeah, ex- exactly. You're right. She also looks super not Jewish, right? So not Jewish. Blonde. Yeah. I was like, what is she doing here? Is this the wrong? <laughs> is, is he in the wrong building? Is she in the wrong <laughs> building? But yeah, so she confiscates this basketball and then when everybody leaves, we see her try to basketball with it, but she can't because she's a lady. She can't yeah, basketball. basketball. That was also like, oh, she can be goofy too. Yes. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. So, okay, so now we cut to and I've got this in, in quotes in my notes, class <laughs> where the kids are going to learn all about Hanukkah, but, but they're only going to learn like the first fifth of the story because it's only the beginning of the movie yeah yeah and it's also nice because these are jews so we haven't like cleaned up and shined up the old testament yet so he's like all right now technically this is because the jews have pissed off god again and he's letting the philistines kill them but you don't have to pay attention to that yeah (laughs) i had to pause the movie here and call my mom to just thank her for not sending me to jew school yeah because here's the other thing if they're in high school already why are they like just now learning about Hanukkah? Yes. He's explaining it, right? He's like, in a land called Yisrael. And I was like, <laughs> what? Is yeah, this we've heard of it, man. Fucking what? <laughs> you're at a yeshiva and you're supposedly in high school and you're just now learning about the story of Hanukkah. They teach you that shit when you're a child. What? <laughs> Oh, Jesus. Yeah, right. I also love he starts to write 165 BCE on the um, chalkboard, but the Christian test audience made him cut it before he got to the E. <laughs> right, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but yeah, so he's telling the story and he's like, but what Israel needed when they went up against Antiochus to Philistine or whoever the hell that was, was a great point guard. We'll get to it's a, the analogy. We're, we're going to get there. We're going to get there. But they need a great leader is what he's saying. I also love that in the like fantasy version of this that the kid Alex has going on in his head, Antiochus is Roman because yes. they can't that was they great. can't make him Arabic. Yeah, because uh-huh. <laughs> even in the nineties they knew how that was going, so they were like, Ah, yes, Antiochus, the famous Roman, Roman. <laughs> leader. Right. So he's having this like daydream about playing basketball because it's all he thinks about. And like, let's be honest, 15 year olds are not thinking about basketball all the nope. time. Like, well, so those cheerleaders certainly wouldn't have been so fully dressed. <laughs> yeah, that seemed like a really not accurate part of the movie. But it was there. I don't know if it was my TV. Was there a weird like film going on? Like, like over like a filter to show that he was daydreaming like we didn't already get the idea because he was dressed like a fucking mac it was like a shitty first release instagram filter yes Mm -hmm. yeah well okay so he goes into this daydream where he's like the maccabee basketball player going up against antiochus the roman and as they're doing this they're in the like a desert scene so they've got sand blowing through but they've used way too much sand everybody's just squinting and just like oh can we cut please my eyes to the whole (laughs) fucking scene yep and then on top of that it's got the weird gray Zack snyder doing a superhero movie filter over it yeah yeah Yeah, i expected brendan fraser to go chasing a mummy in the background of this (laughs) (laughs) so yeah so but then that like daydream thing or whatever eventually cuts to a real basketball team where Alex's team is not doing very well. Yeah, and we also see their their coach here, Coach Simowitz, whose theme will be people asking him to do things that aren't his job throughout this movie. Really quickly, though, was he he also didn't look Jewish to me. Coach Simowitz? Yeah. Coach Simowitz looked very Jewish, Rachel. Okay, all right, well... <laughs> 
I, I I feel like I need to just back off on the who looked the most Jewish. You sure okay. do. This is you for me Jewish. and Eli to duel. <laughs> I'll this just, is for us to I'll duke it out. Back. I'll pack a bowl of snacks, Bane, while you guys discuss. <laughs> I don't know. He looked to me like a goy, like overly playing a Jew. Okay. All, All right. right. <laughs> I'll let the audience's screenshot and argue over it. <laughs> this is the hill I am dying on. <laughs> I actually, I loved this joke, right? Where where Alex is like, hey, Coach Simowitz, hey, maybe a little coaching. And he's like, right, coaching. And he just turns around to the crowd and goes, let's go, Lions. Here we go. <laughs> is that coaching? I was like, nope. I don't think that's what coaching is, but... Oh, we also get to meet TJ, or as I have him in my notes, baby Noah, right? During the game, the ref is like, oh, you know, that's a foul on you. And he's like, Fuck you! <laughs> yes! Yes, baby Noah. This is a subplot that the movie abandons for a moment, but it is excellent that they're just like, yeah, no, we have one of our characters with an obvious psychopathic rage problem. <laughs> I also, like, I don't know about you guys, but I have never seen teenagers speak to adults in authority with this much, like anger and who aren't their parents i mean really i mean who talks to their coach like that like that's crazy yeah no this is very much goys writing jewish yeah. children because jewish children would have been like dear referee <laughs> when you call me on that technical foul <laughs> exactly <laughs> to just walk up and be like fuck you man i was like how are you not expelled for that uh, i i did okay so yeah i just <laughs> Obviously, me and Rachel, we okay, we we met as adults because she was <laughs> yeah not born when I was a kid. So yeah, okay. So it's the next morning. The gang is heading into yeshiva today. What I, I just love this little moment. One of the kids is bragging about how many gigabytes of memory his hard drive is going to have, and I'm like, <laughs> yeah, dude, there is there is no way to date your movie quicker than that, other than like Heath in the get ahead episode jokes, right? <laughs> totally. It's got 200 gigs of memory. I watched that as my computer had a thumb drive with 400 gigs of memory plugged into yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. And so this is also where we meet. So, you know, of course this is the movie follows Alex, but his gang of friends, his basketball team are going to be central to it. This is also where we meet another of his friends stick. The kid's name is Stick. Yeah. What the fuck was that? And he's the good Jewish boy that's always more worried about, you know, the religious aspect of everything. You know, like when everybody's bragging about what they're going to get for Hanukkah, he's like, I just wish you people would remember the real reason for the holiday. That That's Stick. Yeah. This was also really not realistic to me that these, again, teenage boys were having like a mm -hmm. very heated, intense argument about Hanukkah, which A, doesn't fucking matter to any Jew, and B, really, you're not talking about who you want to fuck in the ninth grade. Like, there's no <laughs> way that that is what they're talking about when they're together. Yeah, it's a, it, right. So they're having this, like, come on, that's a fairy tale. What are the odds of oil burning for eight days? That's literally impossible and only could be a miracle. Yep. And then they start bragging about their PSAT scores. Uh, which seems <laughs> at least a little more realistic. Rachel, uh, for clarity, that was the test your parents told you was out of 100 that you did really well on? That's what a PSAT <laughs> oh, Yeah. I never knew what went on with that, but uh, people always like gave me a weird look when I told them my score. <laughs> I assumed they were blown away. <laughs> Some people go to college right away. Some people wait a little bit. Don't worry about it. It's not a big deal. You went to acting school. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> that's, that's fair. That's fair. You went to fashion school. That's and what do I the do same now? I'm a fashion of designer. School. You're not an actor. <laughs> that's also fair. <laughs> so now it's time for a like a father son moment here. So we go home that evening. Alex is complaining to his dad that the rest of the team just isn't taking the basketball seriously enough. <laughs> yeah, he he tells his dad that this like. Jewish fucking intermediate tournament thing is going to be, quote, the most important event of his life. Um, But before he says that, he goes, we've lost 20 straight games. They should quit. They're they should bad. Quit. Should stop. Why, are, why is this? Um, we're done. It's over. 20 gate. You're done. This is such a heartbreak because, Rachel, as we're recording this, the Jaguars have set a record by w losing 20 straight games in the NFL. No other team has ever done that except the Tampa hey, Bay Noah. Buccaneers as an expansion. Uh, um, what sport is that? I don't, I don't it's, know. It's football. Is. It's the only one that I care about. And they're in the process of losing their 21st, I think. it's Right now it's tied 2020 hey, with three minutes in the fourth they quarter. Should, they should quit. 
I know. They look, sound bad. I know. They it's sound so bad. sad. They're so how, bad. But. How amazing would it be if this year the Jaguars just quit? Right? They were just like, <laughs> we're not doing it anymore. We're bad at football. We'll come back when we're better at football. I mean, that's what it sounds like to me. Like, Yeah. That's they should be allowed to do that, honestly, at a certain point. Yeah, because next yeah. year they will be. Bad. Anyway, adulthood yeah. doesn't have enough mercy rules. I've always said that. <laughs> yep. But yeah, so Alex's team is the Jaguars of this particular basketball league. Yeah, that's what we learn in this scene. And he dreams of going to the NBA one day, but his mom doesn't think he'll ever make it to the NBA because he won't. Because <laughs> he won't. <laughs> I mean, look at him. I was confused about this conversation, though, because I kind of like lost the thread. He was like, this is the biggest game of my life. And his parents were like, bigger than education. Remember when you wanted to be a superhero? And I don't know how I don't know who constructed that sentence or how they got from you want to play basketball. Remember when you wanted to be a superhero? Like, what is the connection there? Maybe they were going for a, you know how it's impossible for you to be a Kryptonian who landed on Earth <laughs> as a baby? <laughs> Ah, now it makes sense. Thank yeah, there you. you go. Well, and so mom is very generous in her calculus, too. She's like, look, OK, so here's the number of adult males in the N in the in the country. Here's the number of adult males in the NBA. So your odds are one in one. And I'm like, no, no, those are not. That's not how you'd get those odds. They that don't randomly select the NBA <laughs> right. players. Yes, but exactly. you know what? They fucking should. <laughs> If every year they just randomly allotted all professional athletes, like, yeah, sometimes you get a good guy on your team, but like one year I just get picked I would for the fucking Dallas Cowboys. It's like, oh, f I got conscripted this year. I'm a Dallas Cowboy. I would start watching basketball. We all would. We, we would watch every sport. <laughs> also, keep in mind, this movie is, try again, like with the tomboy girl, they're trying to code themselves as a cool progressive movie because note dad's cooking and mom is the one coming in from work oh you're right and i don't know i noticed that neither of you called this out in your notes i don't know if you noticed dad's apron it said kiss me i'm kosher sure did threw up in my <laughs> mouth a little bit <laughs> i loved it nope please get that apron eli Be because you know Fucking Uncle Mark over at the How To Heretic was at a store and he was like, there, that's a Jewish apron. We'll buy that for the day. <laughs> so, yep. Yeah. So but mom tells him he's never going to make it in the NBA. So Alex goes downstairs to mopily shoot some hoops. Dad comes down to have a heart to heart, make some dad jokes. And look, this scene bored me and I don't care about anything that happened. <laughs> but very importantly, they could not get a single shot of these two actors shooting and sinking a basketball. It is always shoot, cutaway shot of a ball going into a hoop, shoot, cutaway shot of yep. a ball going into a hoop. Yeah. yeah, and the dad is just like, come on, man. Of course your mom wants you to be a doctor. Remember, we're Jews. <laughs> That's what you're supposed to do. Also, side note, anytime that Alex calls his dad old, the dad says, uh, I'm well seasoned. And honestly, mm -hmm. I think we should make that a thing for guys in their 40s. It would make me feel less bad about sleeping with them. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's too bad he's not on this episode to take a stand on your side, Rachel. Right? He's yeah. missing out. It's okay. He's busy. <laughs> so now we have to cut back to that rabbi. This is Rabbi Lewis. We have to establish him as the cool rabbi. So he's finishing up some stuff in his office. He has to crumble up a piece of paper and throw it away. So he starts playing a little basketball with himself. Well, be a little silly. And this is also where he, when Alex walks in, he does his catchphrase, which I fucking love and am stealing. What's on your mind besides the yarmulke? I hated that so much. And I know you're <laughs> going to start saying it. And I just want you to know it's the end of our friendship. But so the gist of this scene, though, is that Alex has shown up to ask if his school can please hire someone who knows which type of ball his sport is played with <laughs> yeah. to coach them. It's a pretty small ask, honestly. I feel like it is. I'm on Team Rabbi here because he's basically like, look, kid, this is a Shiva. We don't even hire real teachers for math and shit. Why would we hire <laughs> a real basketball coach? That is true. But, but then the rabbi turns it into a religious thing. He's like, look inside yourself. And he's asking him questions so that he doesn't just have to be like, no, we can't hire a fucking coach. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Maybe this is a lesson from God. And he's like, well, maybe it's just you being a cheap bastard and not wanting to shell out for a fucking coach. 
Yeah. Yep. Look, as a kid who probably should have realized he was an atheist when he was eight or nine years old, I'm used to rabbis giving mystical answers yeah. to reasonable <laughs> questions. Yeah. I just think the rabbi blew his load too early here. He was like, look into your heart for the budget for a basketball right, coach. Right, yeah, exactly. <laughs> So, but the but the wisdom he, he he leaves them on is something about finding their Judah Maccabee, finding their leader. Mm. So that afternoon, he's shooting hoops with Julie at the park, wondering what that last scene was all about. When suddenly he sees an African American. Okay, thank you, Noah. Because to be clear, this movie does just frame it in the terms of this Jewish kid seeing. A black man, and he's like, yep. there he is. There's the yep, guy we need. That is our basketball yep. coach right there. He is the proper color, yes. <laughs> and the connection between the two scenes is like, God will send you a basketball coach or a black guy. Either's fine. Just do it. Well, it's just he will become a basketball coach if he's homeless and you offer to pay him. Okay, I'm getting ahead yeah. of myself, but... <laughs> Crazy billionaire remake of this movie. The first nine black guys he approaches don't play basketball. He's just like, it's you. I just, I just work at this Radio Shack, man. You got to stop coming in here. <laughs> Teach me how to make love. <laughs> oh, my God. And when Alex goes to talk to him, he immediately slips into cool black guy talk. Yep. Like without Ooh, missing a yep. beat. He's just like, hey, man, what's going on? Yeah, he, he goes over there to befriend this. Ad- now, keep in mind, this is just some adult out shooting baskets at the park or whatever and he's like nah man I don't want to be friends with a 14 year old that I just met at a park that's creepy um, yeah they, the cops will not believe that you started this engagement <laughs> right yeah exactly he's like I'll tell you what I'll challenge you to a game of horse and if I win you have to be my friend and he's like I would just I will just leave though I could just no no that's not how this works this isn't a riddle stop I felt so bad for this guy like Alex really, and and again, this is another thing. Like, I can't imagine a child of this age, like, speaking to a strange adult like this. He was like, no, man, come on, come on. You gotta, you gotta hang out with us. Tell me your life story. Tell me your name. And this guy's like, dude, I just, I I need you to back up, please. Yeah, (laughs) the first full third of this movie is just a very realistic reaction of an adult who's being stalked by a Jewish (laughs) child. (laughs) Right, yeah, exactly. I gotta say, Rachel, knowing that you do entertainment at mitzvahs, I am shocked that you're shocked at an at a kid talking to an adult like <laughs> um Noah because of how they talk to adults I actually don't do entertainment at mitzvahs. <laughs> oh okay all right well that's there you go okay that explains it. I got roasted by a 9 year old last week and I have not stopped thinking about it for a second. He it's, is inside your head. That child is inside. <laughs> your he lives head. in my head rent free. It's awful. <laughs> so yeah so but the guy leaves and and doesn't tell him his name but it's okay because Alex makes a note of his license plate. And I wrote my notes. What does he have a guy on the force <laughs> that's gonna trace that plate? Yeah, can you Google that? I don't think that's a Googleable thing. Well, no, it's not. So they do something that's ever so slightly less unrealistic, which was that he recognized what kind of specialty plate that out of state that doesn't border the state he lives in license plate was. <laughs> he rec- he's like he looks at it, he looks at it for one second. And he's like. Oh, that's state of Virginia. It's a booster for the uh, University of Virginia. I bet he's a former University of Virginia player. Mm -hmm. He's doing the level of stalking that I do when I meet somebody on a dating app. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, exactly. And this is where the movie plays with its first idea of a miracle here, where he turns to the the super Jewish friend who wanted to put the Ha back in Hanukkah. Mm -hmm. And he's like, maybe he's the immortal incarnation of the actual Judah Maccabee. And you see both of these child actors pause and be like, that's that's not what the movie's about. Don't worry. That's just, yeah, just no, it was really a serious turn that this movie. We're just moving the plot forward by saying that, but don't worry, we're not going to make him a ghost. <laughs> Look, his nickname is even the Hammer. Huh? <laughs> his license plate was 165, which is the year BCE when all this stuff happened, the Hanukkah stuff. And the license plate said JM, which stands for Judah, Judah Maccabee. 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 Hell yeah. Coincidence? I think not. I think not. He's an undead Jew ghost. <laughs> yep. There you go. So, but the end result of all their online stalking is that they discovered that this guy was a college great named Lamont Carr who was in the NBA and then got injured or whatever, whatever. So now knowing that, we cut to Alex trying to talk his buddies into helping him like recruit this guy as their new coach. Yeah. 
And what's amazing is like, he is going to provide the information for how this works. So this whole scene is just them being like, how do we attempt an adult we don't know into hanging out with us children? Yep. Yeah, well, and they also don't explain what the hell he wants to, because it's not like this kid, well, at least to, it, as near as I knew, it, it's not like this kid could hire a coach. So I'm like, what are they going to do? Are they going to kidnap him? What is the plan? Right. And they're reading this stuff about him online, and they're like, a gift from God. Yeah, a gift from God. A random black guy who doesn't want to speak to you. Yeah. <laughs> Congrats. <laughs> you did it. Yeah. So anyway, so they go to the park to watch him play basketball and then they, they're all like standing at the fence having this conversation about whether or not he is the literal reincarnation of Judah Maccabee. <laughs> really wanted him to turn around at this point. I can hear you. I'm a real person. I'm a human I'm not being. A ghost. I'm not a ghost. I know I'm the only black person you've ever seen, but it's actually very destructive for you to just assume because you've never seen a black person before that I'm a, a ghost warrior, but I'm yeah. just a man. I'm a human being. <laughs> Yeah, so so Alex goes to give him another pitch on being their coach. And, of course, in the background, we have his buddies being hilariously bad at basketball. And they can't think of a way to do that. So they're just, like, falling down. That was <laughs> oh, they're, insane. They're falling onto each other's dicks like a yaoi. It's hilarious. <laughs> also, like, I can imagine it being a point of being like, hey, man, like, we're the next stars in basketball. Like, we want you to be a part of this. Like, you, we want you to right. really help us win. And instead, it's like, we can't even run in a straight line. Can you teach us basketball, Mr. Black Man, sir? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like if the Mighty Ducks had all been conscripted to the team. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so, but Lamont is, is unconvinced. He doesn't want to be their coach. So Alex just whips out his wallet and he's like, all right, what is it going to take to convince you? Hey, uh, if you're making a Jewish movie, just quick tip. If you could not have all of the central Jewish characters constantly try to bribe adults into behaving the way they want them to. Yeah, that'd be that nice. was pretty cringy. And he also says to this guy, he goes, we need you, man. Don't you believe in helping the less fortunate? And I was like, <laughs> wait a second. Hold on. This group of mega wealthy white Jewish kids are less fortunate than this homeless gentleman. Please help us. Yeah. The movie is going to reveal to us shortly that he is homeless, which really puts a turn on this scene. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, so uh, here's what I love about it. Alex gives him 20 bucks and he says, here's 20 bucks. I'll give you the other half after you give us a lesson. And Lamont takes his fucking money and drives off. He says, come back at four o'clock tomorrow. If he just never showed up again, I would love this introduction. Yeah, this right? is my favorite movie. Yeah. yeah, it's true. I do not blame this gentleman for any of his behavior. There is a child <laughs> harassing him. Yeah, so he takes the 20, he drives off. Next morning, we got to make fun of mom's bad cooking again. This will be the last time this comes back. I wish they would stop doing that. Yeah. And it's such a weird trope in movies when they have to show a mom is a bad cook or a dad is a bad cook. They never just burn anything, right? In this case, she's messed up frozen waffles. Like, this woman's a doctor. She can read the side of a box. Right. Right. If you want to make someone a bad cook, just make their eggs bad. You don't have to be like, here's a frozen waffle. I put a nail through it. Eat it. <laughs> <laughs> I covered it in gasoline and set it on fire. Yum yummers. And she even like dumps them out of the box like an idiot. Like she doesn't know how right, to reach yeah, her hand even into a box. How and I was like, gravity works. I feel like this woman's a surgeon. Like, I feel like she could reach her hand into a box of frozen waffles. Like, yes, she's not a toddler. We cut over to her surgery. She's just gently shoving a frozen waffle into someone's <laughs> open chest cavity. It turns out she's in the middle of a huge malpractice lawsuit. Yeah, yeah. right. She's season four of Dr. Death. Oh, yes. my God. Can't wait for that to come out. So, but what we're learning in this scene is that there's a, like, bring your kid to work day at the hospital or something. And mom wants her son to be a part of it because she wants him to want to be a doctor. Yeah, it's a real bummer when they did that during COVID. Let me tell you. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> I feel like any day's a bad day for that. But yeah. <laughs> so, okay. And then despite my fervent hopes to the contrary, Lamont shows up the next day to coach him. So we, we get the whole like scene where he makes them run back and forth real hard. <laughs> this is great because look, the, the, I look, I know nothing about basketball, but I think I can say enough to know that like you can't get good at basketball by running drills, right? But this movie is not going to show the complexity of teaching children basketball, so he's just like 
sprints. Do sprints well, and you will be better at basketball at the end of the movie. I would disagree with that. I yeah. think you need to build up like like any time I've ever seen a movie with any kind of sport. There are conditioning drills. Like, I think this is pretty standard. So it's kind of ridiculous that the kids are like, God, yes. how can he be making us run laps? Why is he doing this? Uh, yes. And this guy's just like, yeah, I mean, you, you guys literally can't even run in a circle. This is insane. You you fall down when you're standing still. <laughs> of course, I'm going to. That's what blew me away about this scene is that they're doing the most basic like wind sprint type shit. And the kids yeah. are going like, we want us to do what you want us to murder him with a stick. Like, it's just it's it, I'm like, what have you guys been doing in practice? Yeah, it also makes it a lot more reasonable that they haven't won a game in two years, mm -hmm. seeing as they can't do one single round of wind sprints <laughs> okay but to be fair to the kids i think none of them were expecting to have to run so much because they are all wearing jeans and four shirts a piece <laughs> oh my god take your winter coats off they're like right? panting and sweating and i'm like yeah man you're wearing a north face <laughs> yeah and we watch him sadly go back to his van this is where we learn that he's homeless and he sends the money back to his family and look very heartwarming Disney Channel original movie. I really did want him to just like pull out a meth pipe and be like, do you see that? 40 fucking free bucks today. And it's free today. <laughs> <laughs> so then it's time for more practice. We, we cut from one practice to another immediately. But this time Styx wants to make sure that, you know, this guy lines up with the history of Judah Maccabee in terms of sibling number and father's name. Yeah. And of course, so by weird. coincidence, he does because the movie's still toying with the idea that this guy might be an undead warrior prince. Yeah. But that's enough for Sticks. Sticks like, yeah, no, he had the right brothers and fathers. He is an undead warrior prince. Yep. All right. What am I? <laughs> Wind sprints? Here we go. Well, and I, I don't doubt that, like, this is something that some guy did when he was at the yeshiva. They noticed that, like, this, that Lamont Carr had, like, you know, these five things in common with Judah Maccabee and, you know, and, and made that into this story. But the idea that those would just be the things that this kid decides to check on are, is hilarious. Yeah. Well, also, he's going about it like, I'm going to prove he's not really right. Judah Maccabee. Because yeah. why? Then he can't coach you in basketball? Like, for what purpose? Right. It's almost irrelevant at this point. Exactly. But yeah, and also both of his answers, he almost gets wrong and then he gets right. And he was like, his father's name should be Matthew. And they're like, what's your dad's name? And he says, well, everybody called him Skip. And they're like, ah, and he's like, but his real name was Matthew. And like, fuck. Duh. Undead Jewish prince. And he's like, okay, how many brothers do you have? And he's like, uh, three. And they're like, oh, it should have been four. He's like, my fourth brother died 10 years ago. And they're like, huh, wow. <laughs> Yes, he is the reincarnated so ghost stupid. of Judah Maccabee. All right, yeah. So <laughs> and then at the end of this scene, this is my favorite, baby Noah, the one with the anger problem, is like, uh, if I throw an extra 10 bucks in there, can we snay the arty okay? And he's like, no. And he's like, shit, <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> well, and then also we have to see bad guy team stop by to pick on him. You'll never beat us in the big act three tournament, mm -hmm. motherfuckers. Yeah. Also, like, did you guys have this much like disposable cash when you were this oh, age? Oh hell no! At fifteen, no. This is Goyam imagining what how much money two <laughs> okay. children have like, on hand. This none of this tracks. Like, I feel like I had fifteen dollars a week when I was that age to like buy a coffee. Yeah, these kids could scrape up forty dollars a day between them for several days for this coach. Yeah. They might as well dip into their bags of Jew gold that they wear around their necks <laughs> at some point in this scene. <laughs> so, yeah, well, that transitions into the next scene, right, where they're all like, gee, how the fuck are we going to continue to pay for this? And I'm just like, why don't you ask your parents if they can pay this 40 bucks a day to teach five kids basketball doesn't seem like that steep. Right. Also, like, why is this a secret? Right. Their parents know they play basketball, so it's not crazy for them to be like, hey, we found this guy to coach us. Like, can you pay $10 each or whatever? And they're like, they can't. No, we must raise the money through the black market. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, because that's more interesting plot wise, I guess. But yeah. Really playing it fast and loose with the word interesting. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, but so Alex decides that he can raise the cash if he sells his prized Dr. J card. Oh, what was that? I, I didn't. So it's like a like a baseball card for basketball players. Uh, yeah. Okay. Collector's item. 
All right. I spent a really long time trying to find out what that was worth. And they're like, <laughs> basketball cards aren't the same as baseball cards. So they have like different ones with different players. Yeah, on them. I did. I did the same. I couldn't find that <laughs> specific card. But yeah. So, OK. So but then we got him. But Julie shows back up to remind us she's in the movie and uh, they're discussing his plan to sell the card to raise the money. Julie doesn't like it. Damn it. Yeah. I will love this. The, the movie barely touches on this, but they agree that Julie's going to do the doctor shadowing program instead of him. I was very confused by that. Does she? So she wants to be a doctor? Apparently, yeah. I get it. That's never established. Nope. So it's just, and also, so the doctor program, the mom's not going to be there. It's like a shadowing thing. And does he think his mom just won't find out that his friend went instead of him? Yeah. We never really flesh that out in any meaningful way. He lies and says he went to it like mom won't notice that it was a Hispanic girl. Right. Yeah. I really wanted the scene where the her colleague comes over and is like, yeah, I mean, wow, your son was great. You never mentioned that he was a Hispanic girl named <laughs> Julie. I don't right. know. A little heads up about that. So, yeah. So, but meanwhile... We get Lamont learning that his van is all fucked up and he can't afford to get it fixed, even on his 40 bucks a day coaching job. I wrote in my notes, oh, look, Lamont is dealing with any service person in New Jersey I've ever met in my entire life. <laughs> oh, that that's going to cost you one hundred and eighty billion dollars. Goodbye. You don't know what I'm talking about. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And he's like, oh, I got to keep coaching. I really need the cash. 80 but that's not going to fix your van. Nope. Anything a car needs fixed is like, what, hundreds and hundreds of dollars? Thousands of dollars? Pretty I mean, much. Yeah, exactly. If you're lucky, hundreds and hundreds. Yeah, pretty yeah. much. But Alex shows up and he's like, don't worry, we'll raise more, even more money. And he's like, you know, I just I don't feel bad about taking your money, kid. For whatever reason, I'll I'll, I'll take more of it. Yeah, that'll be fine. <laughs> we also have an established that he's in Philadelphia waiting for a tryout, a call to try out for the Sixers. Yeah. That's going to come back into the plot. But, he, you know, he's only coaching them until the Sixers call. Yeah. Right. Which is weird. I, I, do the Sixers do like open calls like Broadway? Like you hang out in the McDonald's across from the equity office and you get your chance to <laughs> so, shoot three basketballs. I, I mean, this the, the, the situation he was in is a, is a fairly realistic one, especially the fact that he was impoverishing himself for this desperate effort to to play for like three games or whatever. So yeah, you do hang out in the McDonald's. Yeah, it, it, but, well, it, yeah it, you, you got to be the right guy. But yes, uh huh. There you go. This was also weird because Alex is basically like, hey, but just so you know, like all my friends are really not enjoying this thing that I forced you to do in coaching us. So if you could be a less good coach and coach us less and make us do less hard stuff, that would be great. Yeah, uh huh. So, uh, yeah, so the kids, the uh, rest of the team shows up and he goes, there's this great moment. He goes, hey, my dogs. And then <laughs> baby Noah goes, hey, don't call me a fucking dog, you anti-Semite bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Never forget. <laughs> <laughs> Calls him a slur. They get in a fist fight. <laughs> There is no way that they made it to this age without without ever hearing someone being called a dog. Like, I there's know, no it's so way. Stupid. It's 2003. <laughs> when were they? <laughs> and it, but yeah, he has to stop. He's like, no, nah, no, man, that's just you know my dog. No, no, none. Okay. Yeah. At, at this point, I wrote in my notes: if the rest of this movie is just an African American explaining slang to Jewish children, I'm in, <laughs> and I will watch this movie every day like I'm praying to fucking Mecca. <laughs> <laughs> but no, they're gonna do basketball stuff. It's very sad. Yeah, they just do a bunch. Yeah, of, we see him bummer. coach all the kids a little bit. But at, at any rate, the, it culminates with him sort of half-assedly verbally committing to continuing to teach them and i mean that's the plot is it, like, if is you're waiting plot, for the yeah. plot to kick in you're doing <laughs> this movie wrong so i feel like we can just take a break there um, but we'll be back in a minute with even more full court miracle this podcast is sponsored by better help okay alphabet soup all right chicken noodle all right wait wait, wait. chicken mushroom this is out of order. Hey, Heath, what are you doing? Oh, hey, Eli. What up? Oh, I was just checking to see how that therapist search was going. You know, the one you've been telling everybody you'll start seeing for months now and then stalling instead of actually doing it. <laughs> stalling? Well, I'm not. I 
I had to organize the soups. That's what I'm doing right now. You had to organize our soup. Yes, it's very important to organize them. Look, Heath, if you're having trouble finding a therapist for any reason, why don't you just try BetterHelp? What's BetterHelp? BetterHelp will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. It's not a crisis line. It's not self-help. It's professional therapy done securely online. There's a broad range of expertise available, which may not be locally available in many areas. So if you need someone secular, trans-affirming, or LGBTQ friendly, they can help you with that. The service is available for clients worldwide. But what if I don't like my therapist? Can I just, I don't know, organize soups till he leaves me alone? You don't have to. BetterHelp is committed to facilitating great therapeutic matches, so they make it easy and free to change therapists if you need to. I mean, I was totally going to find a therapist anyway. I was going to do that. But how would I sign up? Visit BetterHelp.com slash awful. That's better H-E-L-P and join over 2 million people who have taken charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional. Plus, God Awful Movies listeners get 10% off their first month at BetterHelp.com slash awful. All right. I'm in, hypothetically. Hey, hey Heath, you, you texted me and told me to come in to tell you that there was an emergency? <laughs> what? No. No, you mean there is an emergency, right? There's an emergency, that's why you came oh, in? Oh, no, uh, no, just a text. You're the worst. I hate you. You should talk to someone about that. Joshua, can we speak to you for a moment? Sure, Mom. Sure, Dad. What's up? Well, champ, it's about your future. I know that you love motorcycles, but 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 your mother and I... We're really hoping that you'd be a doctor. Oh, darn it, Mom and Dad. Don't you understand? That's your dream. I have my own dream. To be a motorcycle. Now, we know you do, son. We know. Right, but you can't be a motorcycle. Well, not if you don't believe in me, I can't. Well, he, he does have us there, hon. No, 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 he doesn't. He can't be a motorcycle. It's a machine with wheels made of metal and plastic and stuff. Look, Mom... Did you always want to be a doctor? Yes. And if Grandpa hadn't encouraged you, I mean, you wouldn't have gone to medical school, would you? Probably not. So why can't you believe in my dreams? I mean, I know the chances of me being a literal motorcycle, the physical object, aren't high, but can't you just let me believe? Oh, I, I guess I hadn't thought of it that way. What way? He can't be a motorcycle! He is a human being! You guys are the worst! You know, you're not the woman I married. Am I crazy? I feel like I'm fucking crazy. And and they're gone. All right. Great. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back for more of this shit. We're going to open back up with Alex on the phone trying to figure out how they can raise enough money for Lamont. Now, I have to underscore this bit because this starts with an exterior street shot. Right. We're outside of Alex's house, but we don't know that. We don't recognize that. We're outside on the street and Alex is saying to a friend, there's no other way to make the money, man. Yeah. From off camera. I was worried about where we were going with this. I thought the guy from Requiem for a Dream was going to open up the door and be like, <laughs> come on in, kids. Yeah, this was about to get pretty dicey. Yeah, but no, he's he was on the phone talking about selling his basketball card then mom comes in and she's like hey how was the hospital shadowing thing that you were a part of today and he's like right good oh it was in a building i was there all he said was it went by so fast and she said i knew you'd love it i didn't even pretend that i thought i yeah. loved it <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly i don't think the mom hears what he says ever no none of her responses really line up to what he says so I'm well, what's funny is like one of the subplots of the movie is that she is a terrible, terrible parent. And the movie seems to be completely oblivious to that. Yep. Well, OK, so now it's the next morning and we see how they're going to get the money. They have decided to run an espresso stand on the sidewalk outside of their yeshiva. Apparently that espresso machine is battery operated. Yeah, they've got one of those battery <laughs> slash self steam powered espresso yep, machines. Super cool. Well, there's a bucket brigade off screen delivering the water. So it's really it's a <laughs> it's, logistically this is difficult. <laughs> okay, but aside from the logistics, like 
I don't see anything wrong with them trying to like have a little coffee stand to raise nope. the money themselves. And yet we're supposed to be like, ooh, bad. Right. They're being bad. Right. When Mrs. Klein shows up and sees them, the, the, the evil teacher from before, they have to let, they're like, oh, it's a, uh, 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 a fundraiser for, uh, 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 you know, kids who need better coordination. You know, why not just, yeah, we're raising money so that we'll have money. Yeah. Also, there's a lot of like Jews probably do that in this scene. First of all, I think they didn't give them a lemonade stand because they were like, nah, Jews wouldn't do a, a lemonade stand. They would do a, what are they? Starbucks. They would do a Starbucks. They yeah. would start a Starbucks. To be fair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I also like how Mrs. Klein like can't turn them down after they say it's a fundraiser. Like it's some kind of magic. Like, oh no, we said it's a fundraiser and we're Jews. You know the yeah, rules, right? It's raising funds is yeah, it's true. It's sacrament. true. But you better give at least a percentage of that money to Israel in a way that's problematic. <laughs> okay. I just want to cut in here. I mean, a lot of Jews have stomach problems and acid refluxes among them, so that for them to not do a lemonade stand is actually pretty like religiously accurate. <laughs> okay, fair. They just have a jar of Tums. They're doing a dollar a pill. Yep. <laughs> okay, so then we've got, we, we cut back home. Mom is bragging to dad about how hospital shadowing their son is. Right? Yeah. Right? And she's like, hey, wait, where is my battery operated <laughs> water <laughs> generating espresso machine? And he's like, yeah, that's usually sitting on the uh, counter. Yeah, they're like, you must have just misplaced it. Right. Yeah, exactly. Oh, uh, I hate it when you've got the espresso machine in your hand, you open the fridge <laughs> to see what you want, <laughs> and, and you end up setting, and then you're like, ah, oh, how did this espresso Wait, why machine did end I up in the, the fridge? Yeah, so and then fun. you like drop it by the front door with your keys, the whole thing. Right, yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> We've all been there. So, But just then, Mrs. Klein calls to tell mom that she saw Alex selling espresso on the street, because, you know, that's the kind of thing you would you would call about, of course, he's supposed to be doing the hospital shadowing at just that moment. Yeah. So he gets in trouble. Mrs. Klein comes in and busts him. And then we get him getting chewed out ish by the cool rabbi. <laughs> and I, so he reverse Jews him. Right. He's like, ah, I think fundraising so that a strange man can teach you basketball isn't a great idea. And he's like, no. The Torah says, be kind to strangers. And he's like, ah, oh, you got me. The Torah doesn't say that. Yeah, the Torah. God damn it. Fine. Go, go hire a random black guy to spend time alone with children. <laughs> it was also weird. He was like, you're hustling strangers out of money for coffee. Selling people coffee is right. like hustling them out no. of money. Nope. Did it's I miss something? Just like, capital, if you're anti-capitalist, that's one thing. You know, let's have a discussion there. Also, like, they are giving them coffee. They're not selling them dirt water. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it was real coffee. It's not a Dunkin' Donuts. Right. <laughs> <laughs> now that's a hustle. But so then cool rabbi's solution to this whole problem is that he's invited Lamont to some weird Jewish ceremonial dinner thing. So he won't be a stranger anymore. And now he'll be able to teach the kids basketball. So this is the Sabbath, which they call Shabbos. And all of Noah's notes for this scene are like, what is happening? When do they sacrifice him? Is there a goat here? <laughs> well, so my note is actually about Poor Lamont, he's just doing his damnedest to pretend none of this shit is weird and all of the food is good. Yeah. <laughs> and I've been there. I've been there, Lamont. And by the way, if if they were doing like really good latkes or something, I would be like, oh yeah, he's having a great time. But they were like, try the gefilte fish yes, with the horse horse radish. Radish. <laughs> You ever seen a ground up fish kept in a jar of liquid like a body part? <laughs> Here it is. It's nice and room temp. Have you ever hoped your food looked like a background setting from a Frankenstein movie? Well then come on down to gefilte's fish. Have some have some of the chopped liver, she said. Jesus Christ. Oh, my God. And he was like, wow, this is num, num, num. <laughs> num yummy and this my sure tummy. This is um, caloric. Yeah. Now, Rachel, we, we should part the curtain that doing this to your non-Jewish friends is a Jewish tradition, right? Is that you, oh, yeah. No, 100%. You bring, yeah. And then it's it's whoever can keep a straight face the longest while you do weird Jewish shit in you front of them. You marry them. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> 
And of course, they have to have him like make a faux pas. And it's so stupid. They couldn't think anything normal. He's like, oh, now could I trouble any of you for a glass of milk? Who the fuck would want to ask for a glass of milk after his fish? I was thinking that too, but I've gotten in trouble before for making fun of waspy people for drinking milk (laughs) with like a steak dinner. And they look at me like I'm the asshole. So I didn't want to be like this fucking idiot asking for a glass of milk. But that is what I thought. And then they look at him like he just brought up the Holocaust. Yes, exactly. Yes. And he's like, right. Weird Jewish food. <laughs> he may as well have been like, could I get a little cocaine to sprinkle on this to build a fish? <laughs> <laughs> this dinner is delicious. Man, it should be okay for Palestinian kids to get as close to a fence as they want, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly how they looked at him. Also, quick note, the woman serving them food is in a wig because she's mega Jewish. Was it just my screen or was her wig the color of cremated remains? Yeah. Like they couldn't afford to go to a wig store? I'm not sure I know that color. Imagine someone trying to explain from dress to set dressers for <laughs> Disney original movies. That's so, a great point, yeah. Eli. Thank you. Yeah. That explains everything about this movie. They wear wigs? Yeah, you know, kind of like Wednesday Adams. Say no more. Got it. Wednesday <laughs> Adam wig for rabbi wife. <laughs> so... Okay, here's the thing, though. What's playing out in this scene is that mom, Alex's mom, has some very serious concerns about letting this guy be the basketball coach at the yeshiva, but the cool rabbi wants to hire him. Now, mom is viciously, viciously racist, right? I feel like there's no other way to read this scene. That's the best part is that this scene is definitely trying for mom's a fuddy duddy who doesn't want him to play basketball, but it reads like, guess who's coming to dinner? (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Yeah. And they're all just like, oh, well, if he teaches at the school, then it's like not a big deal because they're not out on the street. And everyone's like, wow, that's a great idea. Thanks so much. And the mom is like, do you guys not see that he's black? Right. Yes, exactly. (laughs) Am I crazy? Is nobody else seeing this? (laughs) There's this moment. And again, you can see from the writer's point of view, it was like, well, it's that you're a complete and total stranger Strange. and i was like "Ooh, that word even ends in our writers of this yes, movie are G-E-R, you sure no less yeah are no, you don't sure wanna... guys are you uh, sure <laughs> yeah and then the guy tries to like make it easier on the racist mom by being like well it'll just be a temp position we'll go day by day in right. case what he gets he's still black at the end of the week <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean we'll take it day by day now, to be fair, at the end of seven years, we do have to let him go. No, oh, God, to let Jesus him go. Christ. <laughs> Unless we've given him a wife. Hold on, <laughs> hold on. There's a, <laughs> there's a way around this shit. I also like that dad tries to ameliorate this by being like, you know, Jews run the NBA. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So did funny. you did you know that Jewish teams basically invented the NBA? And he's like, well, it depends on how broadly we're going to interpret the word basically, but sure. If you mean that black people weren't allowed to be in professional sports <laughs> yes! for a really long time, then yeah. <laughs> Jews invented a lot of stuff. <laughs> By that measure. Do you know that Jews invented most black music? <laughs> <laughs> So and then, okay. so after the dinner, there's this great scene where mom is basically bitching at dad for making her racism so obvious. (laughs) He's dad's like, I don't understand. What's the harm? She's like, well, you know, I'm not allowed to fucking say it on the Disney channel. (laughs) I know. Also, the dad is like, he knows he wants to be a basketball player. You knew you wanted to be a doctor when you were that age. That's not the same thing. Not the same. No. It isn't the same. No. <laughs> He's three feet tall. He can't be a basketball player. No. Why is the dad an idiot? That's the thing. If this movie wanted this to be part of the plot, make the kid really good at basketball. Or at least the same height as his friends, right? Like, I know that there are <laughs> not every great basketball player is super tall, but come on none of them are super short (laughs) right none (laughs) so okay but now it's uh lamont's first day working at the yeshiva as the basketball coach oh and these 
Hebrew school kids are running and cowering at the sight of a black man. Like there's a school shooting going on. Oh my God. He's walking through the hallways. They're ripping the fire alarms out of the wall. <laughs> and the whole time Alex is going, they'll be really nice. See how much they're like, getting out of your way so that you won't, you'll be able to get right through. There's like, and then Mrs. Klein comes up and she is also viciously racist. Oh my okay. God. Look, I get it. Disney Channel original movie, you couldn't have done it. But if Mrs. Klein had had a thing for black guys and that had been a subplot for the rest of the movie, that would have been way funnier. <laughs> well, instead they have him, like, you know, he walks through with this basketball and he accidentally drops it. And she's like, uh, yeah, Mr. Carr, you know, people are not allowed to dribble basketballs in our hallways. I'm like, this is your fucking coworker on his first day, though. You don't treat him like a goddamn kid. Mm -hmm, yeah. Unless you're a vicious racist well, to the right. subtext of this movie. Right, exactly. Again, it all makes a lot of sense if we assume that the majority of these characters are just bigots. Yeah. Also, we get my two favorite lines in the movie here, which is, a gefilte fish out of water. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. That's what he says he feels like. And you dementch. Oh, that was amazing. Ugh, my insides curdled when I heard that. <laughs> the old coach, Mr. Uh, coach Simowitz or whatever his name was, he comes up and he's like, I don't have to be the basketball coach anymore. You dementia. Ugh, it's rough. So, okay. So now we're at practice that afternoon. Julie drops by to vaguely remind us that she's in the movie from a distance in the background. <laughs> Again, they're like Disney had this contract and it says she had to be an X number of scenes, apparently, too. Right, exactly. My daughter will be in six movies and an over five in all of them, damn it. Yeah. <laughs> And we also, and this is kind of weird to me, we have to reinforce this subplot of Alex being a ball hog, right? That's his big problem. He refuses to pass the ball. He always wants to shoot himself or whatever. We don't really resolve that, but we, we set it up 37 times. Yeah, we give these Jewish kids like random characteristics. The most bizarre one is coming up. They're not at it yet, but the most bizarre one is coming up that relate to their basketball and none of them ever resolve. Not really. Nope. No, uh-uh. So and then so Lamont is, is teaching the kids cool rabbi Rabbi Lewis comes up and explains all the biblical basketball strategy that he knows from his Torah studies to Lamont. Yeah, he's trying to do the thing with the, the largely probably mythical thing where the Maccabees like made everybody turn the wrong direction. So they had to fight with their wrong hand. And and Lamont's just like. Yep, that is the full court press. That's the full court press. It's just like, yeah, right. He tells him that, and then and Lamont's like, that's given me an idea. So he, he gathers the kids together to inspire them with a little Maccabee talk. Yeah, most of which is, you need to believe you're going to win to win, which is a lie. Like, they're yeah. four feet tall. They're not going to win. Right. That may be a prerequisite, but it's certainly not the main one we're worried about. No. <laughs> So, yeah, so practice is over. This is also where this is the scene where Alex steals TJ's bike, that's baby Noah, so that he can follow Lamont and find out where he lives, which means, number one, he's got a weird fucking obsession with this guy. But also, number two, he can bike at van speeds. <laughs> yeah, that was insane. And also just like such an invasion of privacy, like. Hmm, I wonder where this adult goes at night. Is he homeless? Is he a ghost? Let me follow him and find out. Leave him alone. Right. I wrote in my notes, remember, kids, homelessness is adorable and lots of your business. <laughs> <laughs> a great way to put it. I mean, truly. There's this moment where the where the coach gets home and he's like rubbing his knees because he's got bad knees. And I wrote in my notes, Gosh, this kid is lucky that his coach didn't decide to jerk off when he got home. <laughs> it's a very, very different movie if any of my students ever decide to follow me home. <laughs> I don't think you should be our coach anymore. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> also, did you know there's a website of just like all the famous women's feet? Anyways, I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> so... Also, I just want to call out here while Alex is like following him home, he's doing some cool like BMX biking and like oh, yeah, bikes uh -huh. over an unfinished construction site. Like, where does this kid get off? You are in everyone's fucking way and everyone's <laughs> what an business. Asshole. Go home. Right. Absolutely. Uh, there is this weird moment though where like he's like, all right, well, now I know that uh, you're unhoused and, and, and living in your van. Um, I am still under the impression that that is somehow my business. I'll leave. And Lamont's like, hey, man, you want me to cook you a homeless dinner? Yeah. God. He says, 
since you're already down in the hood, dot, dot, dot. And I was like, if he says want some crack, this is my favorite movie. <laughs> I was hoping for that, too. <laughs> now it cuts to the Requiem for a Dream. Yeah, house. right. right. <laughs> Seriously. Da, 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 da. All right. So, but yeah. And also, I love the idea that this guy is like, he finds out that his coach doesn't have a place to live. And he's like, you know, just living off cans of beans. He's like, hey, man, you want half a my one can of beans that I must subsist off of. And he's like, yeah, man, I'll take half the beans. <laughs> okay, but if you get to divide the beans, I get to choose which portion I want. And he's like, sure. God, I mean, this bummed me out so much. So much. Don't worry. If your beans aren't enough, I'll have a snack when I get home. You know, yeah. I'm going to text my mom to order a pizza just in case your only food. <laughs> it's not it enough to horrible. satiate my appetite. Exactly. <laughs> And of course, this is where we finally establish, and we've hinted at this already in the movie, that Lamont has a family back home in Virginia that he's been sending money to this whole time. Yeah, which is just all just a bummer and more sad that Alex is like chasing this guy down and making him coach their basketball team. Right. Yeah, exactly. It makes him a lot less likable. <laughs> So then, and then we get the next day at school, and we really have to flesh out that plot line. So Mrs. Klein has noticed that there are some inconsistencies in Lamont's paperwork. He didn't even fill out his home address. <laughs> dun dun dun! Plot twist. And again, I know I feel bad for the writers because they were going for oh, the not nice teacher is suspicious of the new basketball coach, but it one hundred percent feels like. I don't believe you have a house. You're black. <laughs> right. yep, yes. That is absolutely how it read. That is yes. 100% true. So he gives a fake address and she oh, just goes. one, two, three, four, Main Street. Yeah. Uh -huh. Literally. And she just goes, great. Sounds good. See you later. Like, just peace, love in the club. Well, right. Because, yeah. Right. Like, <laughs> that would be the last thing that would ever come of that. Also, by the way, this is the first day of Hanukkah now. So we get the family lighting the candle. Yeah. Also, I don't think they did a very good job of like making any of this make sense. But like Hanukkah's in mid to late December usually. Yeah. Yes, it is. Why is there no snow on the ground? Like, well, you know, you know how it is in Philadelphia, it's right? Not it's not very sunny. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> sun is shining in December. Yeah, hundred percent. No, <laughs> you're right. You got me there. Sunny there. There's a whole show about that. Yeah. Also, I don't know. They didn't get a lot about Judaism right in this movie, but he did get a CD-ROM encyclopedia for the first night, and that does track for Judaism. Yeah, one hundred percent. One hundred percent. Well, that's one of his presents. He also got. His Dr. J card back because apparently mom and dad went and bought that after he sold it at the pawn shop. So weird. So he he pawned it and they were perusing the pawn shops. And yeah, how did it? they know that he sold they it? bought it from him on eBay? <laughs> no, right, none of that made sense. No, no. They explain it. Julie told them that he had sold his Dr. J card. So they, they went and got it oh, out of pawn. Right. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, nice. I cared so little that that just like went in one ear out the other. I, I was writing in my notes at this point, Jewish movies are so much better than Christian movies. That actually makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> right, I forget how jaded you guys are. You guys are like, this is a great film. This makes, like all the scenes are there for a reason, it seems like. Yeah, I love how nobody's marrying their rapist. This is the best. Yeah, <laughs> everyone's getting through complete sentences. Right. Sort of. Well, more or less. So the next day we have a cool rabbi, Rabbi Lewis, noticed that Lamont's van looks awfully lived in. And as he's walking in, Mrs. Klein shows up to tell him, you know, like, hey, you know, so I got I, I looked at the address on Lamont's paperwork and and, and I, I drove by it. I couldn't find it. Why would you do that? Again, huge invasion of privacy. And also she needs a fucking life like. She really was just like, I drove around because I was suspicious. I was suspicious of the only black person that has ever worked for us. Yep. That's the whole reason. And now, again, if, if they went Eli's direction and she just had a thing for black guys and wanted to, like, you know, run into him in his neighborhood or whatever, <laughs> then it all makes sense. And she's yeah. not a terrible, terrible person. But yeah. Yeah. Which does make her like a better villain, to be fair. Like it does. It does That's solidify her fair. more as the villain in the movie. If, if she ever got any legitimate comeuppance, then that would be good. Yeah. Well, no, because she's going to shoot a piece of paper later and then entirely change. Oh, character. that's right. Yeah, she has a turn. <laughs> oh, yeah. God, I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah. So she's like, yeah, it's really weird that he would give us a fake address. That address doesn't even exist. And the cool rabbi is like, hmm, I guess we should do 
something other than directly ask him about it, huh? Well, you guys, we should do something convoluted. And she's like, convoluted? Yes, that was my plan as well. <laughs> something, uh, you know, Disney Channel original movie hijinks. Oh, yeah, for sure. Disney ran some hijinks. Yeah, exactly. So she puts a scarf on her head. And sunglasses on, you know, like in all the movies where someone needs to disguise themselves. Yeah, exactly. He'll never know who she is now. Right. Yeah, she's going to follow him home. But Cool Rabbi's figured out that's her plan. So he warns Alex to warn Lamont that she's going to. This is so fucking stupid. I'm so stupid. But so now Alex, if he wants to keep his coach, has to find a place for him to live right away. And we should point out that those are the stakes the movie gives us. Not, oh my gosh, my friend and person I care about doesn't have a place to live. He's like, he might not be able to coach my basketball team yep. anymore. This is serious. Yes. <laughs> yes, right. Keep in mind that Alex, like upon learning that he lived in a van, wasn't like, hey, dad, don't you have a, a condo that's sitting empty and not being used right now? But when it was like, oh, you know, if, we, if it turns out to be unhoused, we're going to have to fire him from the school for some just ungodly evil fucking reason seriously i mean oh we found out this guy really needs some help let's fire him yes, from his job what? that seems like a good idea cool and that's when alex's altruism kicks in he's like oh well i'm gonna be affected by his homelessness fuck <laughs> So, yeah, so he leaves a note on Lamont's car that says, hey, go to this address after school. Mrs. Klein is going to be following you. Make sure she keeps up. Now, this isn't a pre-GPS world. This is 2003. Like, it's a good thing he knows all the streets of Philadelphia by heart and knows exactly how to navigate to that address, right? Yeah, he memorized the whole city. <laughs> He's not from there. He hasn't been there for very, but okay, yeah, right. Yeah, this was set up like a full-blown heist. <laughs> exactly, yeah. <laughs> but she's sneakily following, and this is when her convertible gets splashed by mud because she's a Disney Channel villain. Yeah. yeah. Got him. <laughs> <laughs> that's all her come up and steal. That's, yep. that's and what you get for trying to get your only black employee fired yeah. <laughs> for being homeless. <laughs> He's already houseless and struggling. Uh-huh. Cool. Because he's houseless and struggling. Yeah, yeah. Now you need a shower. Oh, no. Oh, no. She was going to do that when she went in his neighborhood anyway. See, it really doesn't <laughs> matter. Oh, oh, my God. <laughs> so, yeah. So now dad and Alex have to talk Lamont into taking the free apartment. He doesn't want to, but he guesses he will. This is such a weird moment where they can't just let a person who's homeless be like, oh yeah, no, thank you for the place. He's got to be like, I'm going to paint in here and also make you a bookshelf. Like, he can't just take kindness. It's got to be like, oh no, don't worry everyone. He's one of the good ones that like will exchange goods and services for right. kindness. Yeah. yeah. And like, oh, I'll, I'll pay for the utility. I mean, just God, so upsetting. And then they're like, okay, we've got a deal. And that's when white dad goes in for a handshake and turns it into like a weird racist like secret handshake that they don't that the other guy doesn't know about mm -hmm. this is really uncomfortable see i wrote in my notes this is heath and right with every waiter and person who works at a restaurant regardless of race <laughs> that is absolutely true <laughs> it is yeah all right so now we see mom getting home and she sees that alex gasp with me now Got a C minus on his history test. Now, we will treat this as though she found a beaten to death prostitute in his trunk. OK, we had very different parents so, growing up. Yeah, let's <laughs> let's back up for a second, because every time the three of us do an episode, we have a moment where Noah's like, what's wrong with that? And me and Eli are like, <laughs> oh, you didn't have Jewish parents. <laughs> He may as well have slit his mother's throat. Like you really. <laughs> yeah. Like if I came home with a B, which I did frequently, that was like a big problem. Like that's a big fucking problem, Noah. Like you don't. I'm trying to translate it into going. I know, to me too. And I can't can think of anything terrible enough. Crack to, pipe. Yeah, something like that. Dead sex. Got worker. someone pregnant. Uh, pregnant. No, because they raped. like that sometimes. Yeah, They're excited right. um, that they have a grandbaby now. Yeah. <laughs> There's literally um, nothing terrible enough. Oh, to, oh. Imagine if she had found out that he was dating a Jewish girl. Can you? Ah, that's, 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 that's it. There it is. There it is. <laughs> there it is. There it is. 
Well, I love to the way this movie plays it. Like he gets a C minus on his history test and mom and Miss Klein feel like maybe firing the black guy would be the best idea. (laughs) 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 But Rabbi Lewis is like, I don't know if we should fire him over that, but we'll, we'll see. We'll, we'll try to get those grades back up. And then this mom leaves. This is where cool rabbi makes Mrs. Klein have fun throwing a piece of paper into a bucket. And now she's a good guy. And she will be a unaddressed good guy for literally the rest of the movie. Yep. Yeah, we're done with that now. Um, And so and then it's time for like, I guess, their first basketball game. And I guess three or four weeks. I don't know how long we've been going. I don't know. I don't know. I'm having trouble figuring out how their schedule works here. Yeah. So you're not the only one. They also don't know how their schedule works. And I'll tell you why. Because we're going to this movie towards the beginning is the first night of Hanukkah. And towards the end is the last night. And I don't know if you know this, but there's only eight days. <laughs> so this whole movie is eight days long. Their entire basketball schedule is eight days long. <laughs> Hanukkah goes forever in this movie. I'm not really sure. And I don't think they are either. Yeah, the uh, the rotation of the earth has slowed down in this universe, clearly. Maybe it's Hanukkah the next year. Is that possible? <laughs> so- that seems more likely. All right, so, and of course, this is the scene where they're they're all getting ready for the game and he gets them to all bark along with them. Like doogies! Yes. So, for context, um, for the podcast listener, Rachel really, really, really likes dogs. Mm -hmm. Pugs. Boo dogs. And so, what I wrote in my notes for this scene was, God, I'm writing my notes before Rachel, but I already hate what she's going to write for this scene, which is, in this order... Bulldogs, OMG, OMG, Bulldogs. He said, Bulldogs, I love Bulldogs. Be fat and lazy. Where's Madge? I'll ask her what dogs say. <laughs> I muttered Bulldog during this entire scene. <laughs> Those are, that is the extent of my notes for the scene. I just sat there on the couch going, Boo Dogs, Boo Dogs, Boo 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 Boo, boo Dogs. But okay, but here's the thing. Like, this is their movie. They wrote it from beginning to end. They didn't inherit Act One in a will or something. They could have made this team the goddamn Bulldogs. The team is the Lions. Yeah. <laughs> Why aren't they roaring or something? Because then it would be silly. Yeah. This was Bulldogs. <laughs> Best kind of dog. They could have just been the Bulldogs. That's a team name. And then. And there's just this weird turn. He's like, you're all my dogs. And they're like, yeah. And he's like, one more thing. And I'm like, oh, new jerseys, new mascots. He's like, Alex's grade sucks. He's not allowed to play. Yep. <laughs> and like, look, that's a valid thing. School matters. Alex isn't going to be in the NBA. But maybe I wouldn't announce it as a turn at the end of the psycho talk. <laughs> <laughs> that's fair. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. Apparently... C minus is way bigger a deal than I was giving it credit for. So we're going to need it to is. take a no, pause. It while I <laughs> if you could just be respectful of our culture, that would be great. <laughs> you're cultures. being really dismissive right now. <laughs> get away from the fence. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to I'm going to get reamed real quick. But first, let me give actually the hard sell. Was the whole purpose of doing this movie getting Rachel through the bark like a dog scene? <laughs> if not, why not? Why are so few sports teams named the pugs? <laughs> Find out the answer to these questions and more when we return for the miraculous asterisk conclusion of Full Court Miracle. No, I said pug. (laughs) Hey, podcast listener. That's right. We're talking to you. Are you looking to give someone the gift they really want for Christmas? I mean, really, really want. You know what we're talking about. A massage with a Gen 4 Theragun. Sure, outfit stuff and those earrings are great, but outfit stuff won't work the kinks out of your neck like a Theragun. Yeah, I mean, depending on the stuff, it might work kinks into your neck. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Theragun is the handheld percussive therapy device that releases your deepest muscle tension using a scientifically calibrated combo of depth, speed, and power. And it's as quiet as an electric toothbrush. So nobody needs to know how good you're getting it. And by it, of course, we mean the release of muscle tension. Whether you want to treat your muscle tension from working out, an injury, or just the stresses of everyday life, there's no substitute for the Theragun Gen 4. It'll keep working long after your little piggies go to market. Also, due to the tone of this ad, we feel like we should clarify, it's really for massage and not for your 
for your bits. It is not. Theragun sent us one to try, and I'm not kidding. It's the product I use the most out of all of our sponsors. So try Theragun for 30 days, starting at only $199. Go to therabody.com slash awful right now and get your Gen 4 Theragun today. That's therabody.com slash awful. Therabody.com slash awful. Therabody. Everyone likes to feel good for Christmas, but even more people just desperately want to stop feeling bad. Especially their biceps. Oh my god, me too! Oh, you think it's a typing thing? I think it might be typing. All right, everyone, I am Brian. I am the rap coordinator for the music. Are you guys all excited to learn some beats for this film? Uh, question. Uh, sure. Uh, yes, what's up? I have this note from my parents that excuses me from rapping because of my asthma. I'm sorry, you can't rap because of your asthma? Because of my asthma, yes. I get out of breath very easily. Okay, uh, that's fine. Uh, just maybe stand in the back and mouth along uh, when we do it. Uh, excuse me? Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, my son is allergic to peanuts. Are we sure there haven't been any peanuts associated with this rap? I'm pretty sure there are no... Because he would die. He is very allergic. Okay. Uh, yeah, well, we will double check and... I, I mean, we, assu we assume he's allergic. You can never be too careful. Right. No, okay, new plan. I'm going to give you guys... At most three rhyming words, and that will be the extent of the rapping in this movie. I can only do two words. I sold. Did you say peanuts? No. Because my son is allergic. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back for still more of this shit. We're going to reopen on the team basketballing without Alex and Alex sitting in the stands being all pissed off and C minus -y. I love it because he's like, I didn't fix our basketball team for you guys to play basketball. I fixed our basketball for me to play basketball. Yeah. He's also still not good at basketball. They're like, what are we going to do without him? I don't know. Win? Well, so they haven't done a very good job of this, but he is supposed to be the star player on their team. You know, it, again, it's hilarious because of the height difference between him and, everybody, huh. him and everybody else and the fact that the... I don't believe you. Actor doesn't seem to be particularly good <laughs> at basketball. But yeah, he's supposed to be the star player. So without him, the whole team falls apart. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. What now? This is where he also like ruins things with Julie, which was crossing the line for me. I was like, look, you want to destroy your life academically for a dream that will never come true. That's one thing. But if you bullshit your way out of pussy, Alex, you have crossed the line with me. <laughs> well, I, yeah, I, she grumpily wanders off from this scene. I felt like it was because she didn't have a bigger. She's like, I thought I was going to have a fucking major role in the movie. And that from that opening scene, it seemed like I was the love interest. I'm out of here. Fuck all this. Yeah, because their fight wasn't about anything. He was like, all you do is roast me. And she was like, that's crossing the line. Goodbye forever. Right. <laughs> exactly. I will not forgive you for this until the very end of act three. <laughs> I get it, Julie. I get it. Sometimes the only way you have to communicate is to roast. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so, so they lose the game because that's what they do. And then the whole team has to show up and help. Alex study for his history retest so he doesn't have to have that dark, dark grade, that C minus follow him around for the rest of his life. Exactly. Now you're getting it, Noah. <laughs> <laughs> right. But what's amazing is he goes to yeshiva, so it's not a real history test. No, uh-uh. It's yeshiva history. So now I was conflicted. I was like, ah, oh, okay, maybe it is okay to care about sports more than yeshiva history. <laughs> right, yeah, exactly. Hard to say. Well, I love their half-assed attempt to basketball up this scene, right? They're like, hey, look, you're great at remembering stuff when it's related to basketball, so all we have to do is relate all of this biblical history bullshit to basketball. But they can't think of a way to do it. Right. So they're like, all right. So the other team was the bad guys and the bad guy was uh, Antioch. And see, now it's basketball. So you can remember it. <laughs> I want him to do that for everything. Like we see him in medical school and he's like, so the virus is the other team. And then we need <laughs> <laughs> as long as it's in basketball speak, he can do it. Yeah. They also try to make I mean, this kid's obsession level is kind of a bummer because we see his bedroom mm -hmm. when they're helping him study and his bed looks like a gym or like a basketball court. Yes, it was yeah. very court, uh -huh. weird. It's got real extreme home makeover vibes. <laughs> yeah, but I yeah. was just like, this is a lot. Like, come on, like, come on, man. Yeah. Like, this is stupid. 
Right. So, but they basketball Lee help him study, and then he goes to take the test. And as he's take as he's about to take the test, he turns to Cool Rabbi and he says, "Hey, would you mind if I dribbled an imaginary basketball while I took this test? It'll help me as a like a mnemonic device." And the and the rabbi is like, "How weird would it be if I said no right now?" <laughs> <laughs> He points to a sign, no imaginary space work. Okay, you know no, what? I should have read the sign. <laughs> but then him pretending to dribble a ball looks like when Eli's one and a half year old son hands me his toy ball, like just sort of fumbling around with his hands in the air. Well, I like how he's imagining himself doing so much better. He's like spinning it on one finger in his imagination. Oh, totally, and but shit. he can't actually do any of that. Yeah, uh-huh. he's doing arm curls and shit. <laughs> so, okay. So and of course, while he's doing this retest, the rest of the team is practicing and Lamont is is giving them the like, you know, you can do it without Alex speech. And he's going through each one of them. He says, "Okay, you have one personality characteristic. Here's how you overcome that for a basketball success later in in this act. Right. Right. He he tells baby Noah to talk to the ref like he's talking to a girl he has a crush on. That's going to go bad. I feel like that's not going to go well. (laughs) Mm -mm. Mm -mm. He's like, instead of shouting at the ref, try to fuck him. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Interesting. (laughs) Getting inside the ref's head. (laughs) My God. And then the other guy, he's like, you're the smack talk. You're going to do all the smack talking for our team. He teaches him some like, rap smack talk so these like little shitty white Jewish kids are like dancing and rapping Mm -hmm. and dribbling bass it's really uncomfortable It's they're so bad they needed to bring in Christian stuntmen to nod their head in rhythm to the rap (laughs) if one thing that Jews don't have it's rhythm so this was really hard to watch and then in what I'm gonna go ahead and call the least comfortable moment of the entire film Mm -hmm. he Mm -hmm. tells the one kid he's like you're the butt because you have such a tremendous thick ass child who I'm a coach for. And the kids- okay. wait, what did he actually mean by yes, that? Yes, let's let's back up just a little bit yeah. there, but some context around that. So mm. no. <laughs> He's telling him like that being a team is like being a, a, a single body and, and you know, your arms and your legs and your head might all be doing different stuff, but it's all working together. It's all coordinated. So he's going like, you're the arms of the team. You know, you've got to reach out and get those rebounds. You're the legs of the team. you got to get down court faster. And one kid says like, what part of the body am I? And he looks at him for a second. He goes, you're the butt. And there is not any real reason for that, except that Mrs. Klein just walked in at that moment and has to hear him being a bad coach. Oh, I did not know what that was. I was just like, oh, she's back to villain. So I'm excited, Eli. I thought you were just failing to give the listeners context. The fact that you didn't catch the context is actually exciting for me. No, (laughs) I was not. I just watched this coach be like, you're the butt of the team because of your luscious, luscious (laughs) ass. I was like, I feel like that's bad. And hey, in Miss Klein's defense, that is bad coaching. You should not tell a child they are the best of the team. Nope, I agree with you on that. That's true, but she really comes in like, she's just grumpy they're doing any extracurricular activity, and I feel like this entire movie could be solved by getting her a vibrator. Yeah. Like, the only (laughs) thing standing between the supposed heroes and the villain of this movie is the female orgasm. Yep. (laughs) The Heath Enright story. (laughs) dark and okay so now it's time for the big history test reveal you know did he do better than the c minus and they put it apparently they put the results in an envelope like it was the fucking oscars (laughs) (laughs) going to warren Beatty to come and tell him he got a zeta minus or something (laughs) but no he did fine he did fine he got a b plus If my son ever gets a B plus, I will execute his entire basketball team on the court like Squid Game as an example. (laughs) Here's my question, though. Like, I understand that when you like go to college to play a sport, you have to keep your grades up. They're playing like there's no stakes here. This game means nothing. 
really he couldn't play because of one C minus on a test? Like, well, that's yeah, exactly. It's not like that was first of all that it's not like that's the report card. And secondly, C minus is a passing grade, though. It yeah. is. I was very confused by this. Right, like it's you have to fail before they start fucking with your athletics over it. Yeah. Yeah, that was very weird to me. And then they put all that pressure on him getting the test back. And they do like a fake out like, ooh, you can't read my face. Maybe this says F. B plus. It's fine. B-plus. Say you're good. Yeah. So, okay. So now it's it's time for another practice. Coach is giving him a big coach. You can do it speech. But he has to explain to him that they're going to have to do it without him because he got a temporary, like a 10-day contract with the 76ers to fill in for an injured guy. Okay. I did not pay attention to this movie the first time I watched it. And I thought he had just been like signed to the Sixers in the NBA and completely did not understand the stakes of this. Because the stakes of this scene, if you're not paying attention, are, oh, should I be in the NBA, my lifelong dream that would make me a millionaire? Or should I coach these Jewish kids in basketball? Yes, well, and that's and that's exactly what the stakes actually are. Now, again, it's a 10 day contract, but the idea being that, OK, if they see how good I am, then I could go on to. Right. Like it still matters. Absolutely. Like a lot more than these shitty little kids. Right. He has a family to support. Yes. And they're like, you have betrayed us. <laughs> yes. They're so weird. I wrote in my notes, if you miss him that much, hire him for your bar mitzvahs. That's what we do. Come on. (laughs) Yeah, it was, I really, this made me hate Alex even more because this guy was like, yeah, I mean, I I did all the stuff you wanted me to do and coached you up until the end. I really thought you guys would be happy for me that I finally reached my dream. And Alex is like, well, "Well, no. no. (laughs) I am concerned with myself, not you and your family. Fuck. Like, they get into a big fight about it. And Alex is like, you don't know what you're doing. And I'm like, oh, my God. Somebody put this little shit in his place. (laughs) Right. Well, he even goes like, you left your family in Virginia to do this. Like, gives him like shit. Yeah, right. Gives him shit for that. I'm just like, okay, like. Can we at least cover this kid in mud at some point or something? No, this movie will conclude that Alex Schlotz is the correct one on the side of this conversation. Right, yeah, that he should have given up on that NBA nonsense and coached this team instead. (laughs) Alex starts to monologue about how no one wants to work anymore. I'm telling you, (laughs) in my day. So... So, okay, so now Alex has to go to his... This is so weird. I have no idea what's going on here. Alex goes to his mom to plead the case for them to hire Lamont as a full-time coach instead of just through the tournament because I guess she sits on the board of the school or whatever. But, like, he doesn't want that. He just said he didn't want that. He wanted to play in the NBA. Right. I think he's hoping mom will be like, okay, we can come up with an $11 million signing contract for him because she knows well. <laughs> I mean, Alex is literally like, come on, let's just throw some more money at him. Like, he he doesn't know what to do. You right, know? yeah. He's a black. Mom, what have you taught me? Money solves all problems. I need you to solve this problem for me. Right, well, and he goes like, Mom, why won't you do it? And she says, there are a lot of reasons that have nothing to do with the color of his skin. I am not going to list any of them. She pulls in a white basketball coach the next week. I'm totally so you can go to the NBA, son. I believe in you. <laughs> she may as well have. Well, she she even says at one point, she's like, son, do you really want to wind up like Lamont? And he's like, you mean black, don't you? She's like, yeah, probably. I do. I do. <laughs> so and then we get this weird scene where I, I guess Lamont is trying to decide in his own mind whether he should take the NBA contract or stay as the yeshiva's coach. Yeah. Or be the coach to the one child who is interested in basketball in this school. That's the other thing. None of these other kids give a fuck. Right. He's going to get fired next year when Alex graduates. Right. And also, anytime Alex has come to these kids, like, we really need to, like, step it up. The other kids are like, I, I got to study for I got to care about I, it. I, I, hate, yeah. I hate it and I hate you. Saxophone lesson that I have to be at. Yeah. Right. So, okay. So, it's the next day. We're in Yeshiva. We're going to learn a little more of the Hanukkah story, but not all of it because there's still 30 minutes left in the movie. Mm-hmm. 
And after class, you know, the cool rabbi sees that Alex is super depressed. So he tries to put like a rabbinical wisdom spin on the whole thing. Like maybe the whole time the ghost of the warrior Judah Maccabee was inside of you. He like pulls out an envelope and unseals it in case of emergency. Mysterious ways. There you go again. (laughs) Yeah. And so apparently he's just. He's going to be the coach now. Alex, the kid, yep. is going to be the team's the kid who is a ball hog as his like secondary characteristic beyond basketball is going to be their coach now. Yep, the the, the little sociopath. Yep. yep. Also, we're glossing over the fact here that the rabbi makes that yarmulke joke again. He does, yeah. What's on your mind besides the yarmulke? Shut up. (laughs) Shut the fuck up. Come up with some new shit, man. Come on. You've had several days. You don't have that many lines. All right. So now it's time for the big tournament to begin. It starts with 16 teams. And then Alex says, we only have to win two to make the finals, which is not how a 16 team tournament works and not how this movie (laughs) portrays it. (laughs) <laughs> get a look at the bracket there's just one big bouncing loop from their team to the final <laughs> so and I love we've spent the entire movie setting up this tournament we go through all the rounds but the finals in like one minute and 48 seconds mm-hmm. they also like hit random tropes of basketball so like in the penultimate game not the one with the like the enemies who we've been seeing throughout the Mm -hmm. movie in the penultimate game they do the like oh he's got the two free throws that can clinch the game they do that in the penultimate game so that in the ultimate game they like don't have any of those sports tropes to do it's really weird oh 100 percent. also i don't know if you guys know but like in other movies and tv when there's high school sports what makes the stakes high is like, oh, there's a college scout or like a recruiter coming to the game. And like, I want to play ball at that college. Like that makes sense to me when I've seen it in other Mm -hmm. pieces of media. And there's none of that here. No. So there's just no stakes, right? Like absolutely. The only stakes is that Alex has said over and over again, there are a lot of stakes here. Yeah. Just insane. The only way this movie has any stakes is if Alex's psychopathy is true. Now, to be fair to the movie, Alex's psychopathy will be true throughout the movie. Yeah, (laughs) no, right, right. So, yeah, so we yada, yada, yada our way through the tournament, and it turns out that, yes, Alex's team made it, and the evil Warriors team is the team that they're going to be facing off against. So that night, Mom gets home from the hospital. The finals are the next day. Apparently, they have a two-day tournament where they play all but one game in the first day. Yep, the, that classic, <laughs> classic <laughs> tournament structure. So, yeah. And also, like, apparently Mom didn't bother, which I get it. I get it, you know. Sure. She didn't bother. She hates her son. I she mean, hates her sense. son. And I agree. <laughs> yeah, I also hate her son. So, yeah, so, but this is where she has to, like, start to understand his dream. And she's like, he's like, let me tell you what basketball means to me. But, like, you know, with a piano melody and rising strings. It's so funny. He's like, can I tell you what basketball means to me? I enjoy it. That's all he says. That's it. He just, he says that with a lot of words and a piano melody. And the mom's like, "Mm." yeah, he said, when I throw the ball, it leaves my hand, and then it goes in the basket. Swoosh. So what basketball means to you is what happens in basketball. Yep. <laughs> it's so yep. That would be like, I am just, mom, running means so much to me because it's like one foot and, goes in front of the other foot. But then. And you just like do that for a while. Yeah. He has this moment where he goes, you have to be proud of me anyway. And I was like, because she literally doesn't know what the word proud means. That's not how pride works. No. You need to instruct someone to be proud of you for your thing. Yeah, but as vacuous as it was, it's apparently enough for her because she gets it now. Yeah, and he also yells at her at some point, why don't you trust me? And she's like, what? You're a child. <laughs> You're 13. <laughs> You're thir- you are 10 years away from wanting to climb into the oven because it's warm in there. You, <laughs> I will trust you when you are 40. That is when you're a sentient human. I know 25-year-olds who I don't trust. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. So then we cut over to Lamont in his apartment. He sure is having trouble NBAing what with those knees. So now, so then he, he has an idea. 
that's just so crazy it might work. Oh. Oh, we also have to establish that there's going to be terrible, terrible thunderstorms the next day. That's going to be important to the plot, asterisk. To be fair, we got bored of the teacher as the villain, so now the villain is weather. Yes. Sure. God has risen against them. Which, by the way, way better performance than Mrs. Klein, so I oh, get it. Oh, absolutely. And less racist. Yeah, <laughs> less racist. This is also where we get introduced to the gangster dreidel dreidel theme that was written oh for this movie. Oh my God. Oh, I loved that. Dreidel, dreidel, <laughs> dreidel, 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 dreidel. That's it. That's That's it. The that was thing. the whole song. That's it. So they have this whole little stupid basketball rap that goes with it. It's so bad. It, oh, just, it was like, you know, when you remember when the group would show up to your school and rap about how drugs weren't hip. It was yep. that, yeah. but with Dre. No, they definitely hired this group at the end of a long day and they were like, hey, 20 extra bucks if you can throw in a dreidel dreidel song for our Disney original movie. <laughs> and they were like, you had us at 20 extra bucks, my friend. <laughs> The kids come out, they're dancing, and they're doing a great job. <laughs> okay, Truly but phenomenal. to be fair, if Ass Kid, if the Butt Kid had dropped it WAP style, I would have forgiven this movie, right? Okay. Yeah. Just like 20 minutes of him twerking. <laughs> yeah, I'm just thinking to myself, it's good that they took some time to choreograph a little opening dance. That's important to your basketball game, yeah. Yeah. They also have this great pep talk moment where Alex is like, this is our doghouse. And those other dogs don't sh shit. Belong. Do a full belong. court press. Those are dogs. Full court press. And we're going to get off the leash and eat some kibble. And like, <laughs> just he's really going too far with the dog thing. We're going to go for a walk and then I'm probably gonna poop eat on my the own grass. Poop later. It's yeah. And somebody will pick it up with a baggie. And then we're going to get a treat. Woo. Yeah. Also, this is when he goes back into the Hanukkah thing. And I just want to point out that. Hanukkah is the Jews don't win the war in Hanukkah. No, nope, they don't. <laughs> the Jews never win the wars in their stories. <laughs> yeah. Also, again, I cannot stress this enough. Hanukkah is only eight days. There's no way that what has happened here has only been eight days. Yeah. Like, there's no way they're still... T Jews forget it's Hanukkah by the last day of Hanukkah. <laughs> oh, we forgot by the third night. It was like, no That's book, true. That is more accurate. Encyclopedia yes. Christmas presents. <laughs> right. So for them to, like, what has to be two months later, be like, yeah, still thinking about Hanukkah is just absurd. <laughs> so, so we cut over to the hospital where mom's there. She's with Julie because Julie apparently won... Dr. Future is a consolation prize. We really glossed over that. I don't know. She sure did. What we missed, what cut scenes <laughs> ended up leading to that. But mom's just like, hey, Julie, you want to just leave early from our hospital duties? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no one's getting any more cancer overnight. Am I right, Julie? Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's go catch a baseball game. If they're going to die tonight, they were probably already messed up. It's all right. Do you want to be in the final scene or what? Julie's like, ah, I thought you'd never ask. <laughs> and then I'm going like, wait, mom was going to skip his championship game. Mom is still going to skip his championship game. She sucks. <laughs> it's, who taught you in a helicopter, lady? Yeah. All right. So now we cut back to the game. The Lions are not doing well. They're down 8, 10 points, something like that. Surprise, surprise. The team that hasn't won a game in two years is far behind. Yeah. But then I, I guess so mom drops Julie off at the game, but she goes to the NBA to find Lamont. Yep. So crazy. I love the idea that you could just pull up at the end of an NBA game and say, hey, where is this player? And they'll tell you where in the parking lot you can find him. <laughs> Sorry, I'm looking for an African-American that way, right? Very that way, tall. Maybe. He was tall. Yeah. Sorry, is it Jordan? Michael Jordan? Is he around here? <laughs> I just wanted I just wanted to say hi. I just like had a thing to tell him. Like, oh, um, you don't know me My and I don't have like a, a press fan. pass, but yes. yeah. <laughs> I actually hate basketball and you people, but I would love to have a little chat with him if that's possible. Well, I'd love to. At this point, she turns to one of the NBA players and she says, hey, you know, if you met a, a kid who's like four foot two and, and wanted to play in the NBA, and what, what would you tell him? And the basketball player's like, 
I mean, I wouldn't say you're too short. Is that the answer you're looking for, you demon? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> See, I really wanted her to be confused and think this guy was Lamont. She was like, Coach, listen, she does the whole model. I really thought that no, was going to happen. I me. really did. I mean, made the movie. She just keeps going from one African-American to another until she gets the right one. <laughs> she throws him the car keys. I just like, oh, he, no, don't scratch it. No. <laughs> So, yeah, but mom finds uh, Lamont. His van won't run because this is the movie's take on it. God has temporarily smited it so that he would still be there when mom shows up. All right. Interesting. Yeah. Is that what that was? I could not follow that. Yeah. Yeah. To be fair, the movie literally doesn't get it either because she's like, yeah, maybe it was a miracle. And Lamont goes, I don't get it. And I wrote in my notes, me neither movie. Me neither. <laughs> Literally, she looks up at the sky, it thunders, and she goes, try now. Yeah, right. Like what? if she was the Scarlet what? Witch, maybe that would make sense. Yeah. <laughs> right. And he was just like, okay, okay, lady. Yeah. Yeah. It's working now. Okay, bye. So, okay. So then we cut back over to the game. The big storm knocks out the power. Right. So now they have to decide whether they are going to forfeit the game because they were down by like 10 points or whatever, or whether they're going to finish it by candlelight. OK, so everything about it, everything from this moment on is just endangering children for your own entertainment. Yeah. yeah. Also, maybe save the emergency generator fuel for non-basketball related for emergencies, activities <laughs> perhaps it's right there yeah. in the fucking name at this incredibly low stakes game like they would just send people home and be right. like we'll have a rematch like this is not that serious that, that's the other thing is that they could also just rematch <laughs> right and like everyone should go home like it's dangerous weather like go home we're not doing this or hey we have an exact clock knowing exactly how much time is left and what the score is let's go home and we'll put that clock back on with that yep. score and we'll finish the game when there's not a storm of brewing. That was insane. Yeah, but they're like, so that's the one option. We could just end the game there or do something like that. Or we could run out the entire supply of emergency fuel for our generator so that we could keep this room completely lit, play until that runs out and declare the person who's in the lead, then the winner at some indeterminate time. And then have everyone try to navigate their way out in the pitch goddamn black. Yeah. I, I cannot believe how many people they endangered doing this. It's like, so I mean, truly. Stupid. Well, luckily, the other coach is Heath and right? Who's like, okay, I like this weird technical way of playing a sport. I'm in. Right. Yeah. No, I was waiting for him to just bust out a piece of paper going, okay, I've, I've come up with 20 different little minutiae that I'd like to clarify. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so, and by the way, for some reason, they have this discussion outside by the generator with all the kids. Yeah, everyone is crowding around this generator. I was like, this is so dangerous. In the middle of a thunderstorm, <laughs> yeah. And, and poor Mr. Simowitz is there. They're like, oh, can you keep it running, Mr. Simowitz? I really wanted him to be like, I am a math teacher, okay? <laughs> math <laughs> teacher. So and he kind of does. He's like, I don't know anything about this. But yes, yeah, so what we have laboriously set up here is that they only have enough fuel for a few minutes. But if somehow that fuel would miraculously last for 15 minutes, maybe they could win this game after all. Oh, it's Hanukkah. Get it? There you go. Oh, Hanukkah. The game is Hanukkah. I mean, I just want to back up to, again, how dangerous this was. There were sparks flying. You well, At a certain point, for no fucking reason that anyone can figure out, the scoreboard starts firing fireworks off of it and giant spouts of sparks. And Literally, yeah. like, the, the whole building's going to be on fire. Right. Get out! This is, mm -hmm. this is Get not out. just... out! <laughs> But they're like, we have to figure out who will win the basketball game. That means nothing. Well, and so here's just to, to give you an idea of just how convoluted they have to make this whole thing to make the miracle work. The reason we left the math teacher out there is because he can calculate precisely how much time that fuel should last. So when it lasts more than two minutes and 45 seconds, we know it's miraculous. Miracle. Miracle. I also love that Mr. Simowitz runs in to waste a tremendous amount of time explaining that. Oh my 
much time. Yeah. I thought that too. <laughs> he spent like seven of those one minute being like, <laughs> right. yes, exactly. This is how the math works. Nobody cares. Nobody even cares if they die so long as the basketball is played. He's like, it's simple calculus. I'm like, it's it's pluses and minuses, man. You made you did a you did a times is all you did. <laughs> I don't believe it rises to the level of calculus. I'm also not even sure that's how generators work. Yeah, right. Yeah. So, okay. So, but then the lights go out for a second, but then they come back on and there's a big glow of light behind the ghost of Judah Maccabee himself. Lamont came back. Mom went and got it. Yeah. It's the eighth miracle. So, yeah. so wait, so, so Lamont is there now to coach them for the last two minutes and 45 seconds of the game. That should make all the difference. Yep. Continue to play basketball as well as you can. <laughs> <laughs> yes. There's also, we have to show that. So the game starts again with, you know, who knows how long the power will last. Mrs. Klein is really getting into it. We have to show that she's changed into a fun, loving person. So they have her scream to a bunch of 15 year old boys, shake some booty. Yep. Oh my God. Oh my God. I hated that so much. Why and would I hate her? And I hate this movie. It's because of the 20 minutes of twerking that the butt kid did. Oh, in okay. Yeah, the they movie. got yeah. cut out because yeah. of the Disney. Okay, yeah, I get it. I get it. It got cut out for a lot of reasons. No, I don't want to go into it. I don't want to air <laughs> those grievances on air. <laughs> but just so, but to be clear, we we get to down to the last couple of seconds of the game. Alex has got the ball. They're down by one and he passes the ball to Sticks because he's not a ball hog anymore. And Sticks gets well. the shot and they win. That's the biggest miracle in this movie that Alex was able to pass the ball. Well, yep. the biggest miracle is that Sticks didn't choke, right? It would be hilarious if just Sticks just choked and they by lost the way, by one. Am I misremembering this, or were there like five fake outs of like the lights flickering? Yep. Mm -hmm. and oh, they thought it sure. went out, but it came back on. And I was like, by the eighth time that happened, I was like, we know they're going to come back on this. Like, we're not. That's not isn't it? This isn't a miracle anymore. Yeah, we get it. Also, let's stop reinforcing how dangerous it would be to have kids out there running back and forth in an environment like that where the lights are just constantly going out and then coming back in. Yep. The janitor is carrying some olive oil across the court. At the, same time. <laughs> Whoa, the game must go on. Well, we did send all the kids outside to get soaking wet and then come right back <laughs> in and start playing basketball. So yeah. They give each kid a gun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they oil up the guns and their fingers. Yeah. All right. Everyone take a bottle of oil and an open torch. All right. Now we're going to play. <laughs> But yes, but the Lions win and the crowd goes wild and it runs onto the court. Again, the power just went out. It's completely dark in there. <laughs> and of course, mom showed up for the last minute and a half of that game. So she's a good mom now. Apparently, at Lamont's big idea was that he was going to come back to the yeshiva and he was trying to get to the airport to pick up his family, not to fly to some other game. Yeah, that was all terrible. Like none of that made sense. No, the the key to it is this that Lamont realized that his dream all along had actually been to coach at this yeshiva for, you know, twenty eight grand a year. So <laughs> Well, but then he also said like I had other dreams and like looks at his wife and kid and I'm like, it took you this long to figure that out? Yeah. Like we all know you should have been with your wife and kid this whole time. Well, and then it, this is amazing to me. So just in case you didn't catch the parallel between the generator's fuel lasting so much longer and the Hanukkah story, cool rabbi pipes into, like, you know, fill in those blanks for us. Right. Yeah. Just really hammer that last nail into the coffin. <laughs> and we put a yarmulke on the generator. There you go. All right, so I guess there's no need to ask the moral of the story since cool rabbi literally says, and the moral of this story is at the end and manages to get it wrong somehow. <laughs> so instead, I want to close by asking if either of you have ever witnessed a Hanukkah miracle. Ooh, ooh, I actually have. So over the years, this is really interesting. I've gotten to watch Hanukkah miraculously transform into Christmas in my family. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My Hanukkah miracle is that I've gotten to watch my mother pretend less and less every year that she believes in God and that she cares about Hanukkah. Nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome. 
All right, so that's going to do it for our review of Full Court Miracle, but that's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need to clock in again next week. So, Eli, tell us, what's on deck? We'll be watching Demolition Man. What? Yep, because Heath makes the schedule and that's how it works now. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Well, with that to look forward to, we're going to bring episode number 328 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to Rachel for helping out tonight, and even huger thanks to all the Patreon donors that help make the show go. If you'd like to count yourself among their ranks, you can make a per-episode donation to patreon.com slash godawful, and thereby earn early access to an ad-free version of every episode. You can also help a ton by leaving a five-star review and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. If you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Alias, Citation Data, D&D Minus, and The Skeptic Card, available wherever podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Legal services for this podcast are provided by the law offices of P. Andrew Torres. Tim Robinson take care of our social media. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slotnick with Address on Mars. All of the music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark, and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a check of your life this week. For Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick, I'm no illusions. Promise to work harder or another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with the Breakfast Club close. Alex never did become an NBA player or a doctor, but he did become a black guy. <laughs> Dad eventually did sell that condo. So many homeless people died while the emergency generator was out of fuel. Oh, should have learned basketball. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2021. All rights reserved.